Hi everyone, my name is Holly and I'm a food scientist. I've been a member of the Institute of Food Science and Technology since the beginning of my degree and my love of food science came from being a food tech student just like you. Once we've completed our investigation and collected all our data, it's time to analyse our results and draw conclusions. We can present our data in various formats. This could be a presentation, a poster or a report. A way of deciding which format to use is thinking about who's going to be reading it, who are you presenting to, and that will help you decide. So I've collected data from a sensory analysis that I did on year two students and year sixes. I asked them to choose which soup was their favorite. After I collected the results, I grouped them together and I found that year twos preferred this soup, whereas year sixes preferred this soup. If your report was all about finding the best starch to thicken a sauce or a soup, you would have to justify your findings and give reasons for your success or failures of ingredients. How did the results of your experiment support or oppose your prediction or hypothesis? Were there some more tests that you could have done? How do your results compare to those that have done similar tests? Are you confident that your results are reliable? Starch is quite tricky to explain, so you can always draw a diagram on how the molecules work to thicken a liquid. Analyse your data to tell a story. No one likes to wade through pages and pages of detail, so take pictures and add them to back up your findings. Here you can see clearly the differences in the apples. This is a great picture to add to your report because people can see at a glance what has happened. Relate your results back to your hypothesis and note any areas that you could improve on. When we look at the salad dressings that we made earlier, we need to analyse them at a molecular level. It's not just enough to say that when you add mustard and egg yolk, it stays stabilised. We need to think about how emulsifiers work. What do they all have in common? What could we have replaced these emulsifiers with? So when you're analysing your results, make sure you explain the science. So once you have your data and you've analysed it, you can then think back to your hypothesis. Did you prove it to be correct or do you need to reword it and complete some more experiments? So now you've come in to summarise your data. And this is the most difficult part, but it's the most important. You've got to look through your data and analyze it, collect it all together and consider all parts. You need to relate it to your hypothesis and remember to tell a story. An example of analyzing data in the food industry is when temperature was lowered on a production line. It was lowered to reduce costs as well as reduce the carbon footprint. And then sensory data was collected to see if consumers noticed a change. Here are my top tips on how to analyse data. Choose a presentation style that suits the audience. That can be a presentation, a poster, or a report. And remember, this is your chance to show off. Show how the ingredients work, get molecular, and use technical language. In this video, we talked about analysing data. We worked through how to structure a report and thinking about different presentation styles depending on your audience. We also spoke about including pictures, work in a molecular level, how to group together sensory attributes, and how to prove your hypothesis.